Hi, my name is Ralph Savage and um, I took up the challenge to make my first ever video about making music uh, and in this case it's about using Loopy Pro. So I'm going to have a little attempt at showing you how I design my workflow where I'm putting together a small five or six piece band if you like um, with a drum kit, um, bass, keyboards, uh, synth, um, guitars uh, and you've got this vocal uh, track as well. Um, the point of this workflow is to get uh, some analog instruments like my guitar and uh, several MIDI based instruments and AV3 uh, modules to function together inside Loopy Pro. So I'll start off with a new project and show you how I put together uh, my system. Okay, so here we've got a basic project uh, and you can hear my vocal coming in through uh, the first column here. So what I'm going to do first of all, because I've got a uh, UR12 with the guitar plugged into channel 2 and the vocal uh, mic plugged into channel 1 is just to separate this into a single channel. So now I'm coming through in stereo and then I'm going to be adding <coughs> my guitar input. So I need to add the second channel. So I'll come to what we do with the guitar in a moment, um, but that'll be adding some effects and so on. And I'm running everything from uh, two MIDI controllers, um, a Korg Nano Key Studio and an M Audio Key Station 49. <coughs> so I'm going to set up uh, three AUV3 instruments with the uh, Key Station 49. So I'll start with that to begin with. So what I need to do first is add um, three um, MIDI uh, channels. So let's start with those. So you go to the plus sign in the corner, which actually is just slightly out of shot, but um, <clears throat> so add MIDI and we've got Key Station 49 port one. So I'm going to add three of those. And then I need to add instruments for those MIDI channels to play. I want to add a bass, which is the fretless, and a synth, which is the synth master one. So now I'm going to tell these MIDI channels to play these instruments one by one. For that one. Now in order for those to play, they'll all play at the same time if I hit the keyboard right now, because it's not separated from channels. So I need to tell the Ravenscroft to listen to channel one. Fretless to listen to channel two. And the synth master to listen to channel. Okay, so my keyboard, if I use channel one, should give me a nice piano sound. Here goes. And then channel two. loud lead synthesizer sound which I'm not going to be using actually I'm just going to set this up quickly okay that's pretty cool all right last but not least I need to set up the drums as well I'm going to use the key studio this little thing for that So nano control keyboard, and I'm going to have to load up an audio, oops, an audio unit, which is going to be the Roosemaker drum machine. So I tell the nano key to play Roosemaker, and then we should have a nice little drum machine. So. Uh, that's the basic setup of the MIDI instruments. Um, so to set up the guitar, uh, most of the uh, 
amp simulators that I use run as AUV3 effect. So you know, to do that, uh, you load them up uh, as effects along here. So if you see here, you've got effects pre-fader and post-fader. So here we have a pre-fader slot and we're gonna add the Tone Stack Pro guitar amp and one other just for fun. We'll add the Stark as well. Okay, the next part is to work with the colors. Um, as you've probably seen on lots of other videos, the uh, color scheme on Loopy Pro is really, really important because the colors tell you which of the loops uh, it's going to record into. At the moment, all of these channels, if, if I want to, I can record into any of them. But um, for logic purposes, it makes sense to have the corresponding instruments playing to each of the right colors. So let's have the guitar playing to the orange. So choose none and then the orange. And then the piano can play to the yellow. The bass can play to the green. The synth can play to the blue. And the drums can play to the pink. The other part of this workflow that's important to me is MIDI mapping. Uh, you can see there's lots of faders um, and you can have either a global MIDI mapping where uh, every project you open uses the same settings or you can do it on a pro per project basis. So uh, in this case, I'm using the Nano Key uh, Studio controller here and um, I've got a global setting for these faders here. So whenever I open a new project, the faders are already set so I can move those up and down and that's a really kind of useful, useful standard setting. Also the uh, balance faders as well, but you can also set up the mute and solo buttons and things like that. Uh, I haven't investigated if you can play around with the parameters of the AUV3s themselves like you can in AUM. Uh, if you can't yet, then hopefully the next update of Loopy Pro will allow that um, because I find that really useful. Okay, one final thing um, is that if you think, for example, you've got these two loops here that are going to be for guitar, two for piano, two for bass, and so on and so forth, um, and you think that you're probably going to want to put three or four more loops for a, an instrument, say you're going to do a harmony line or something like that, then you're going to want to add uh, uh, loops onto it. So that's actually going to change the, the display. So the way you do that is you use this pencil here and you've got the basic kind of setup here. And if you want to add a new loop in, you just do it like that. So now we can put in a whole new row for the whole lot and we can color assign those as well. So I'm going to color assign them just straight down just for kind of logical purposes. So. Thank you. 